So if you're anything like me, then you're probably doing your research to find out whether or not it's worth splashing out and getting yourself a pair of these tech shock absorbers for your bike. Now, you couldn't have come to a better place. I'm a real person. I purchased these tech shocks with my own money. I swapped them out for all the originals. And so they've been on this bike for about three years. And I'll go through all of the key points, the pros and cons of what I found in owning them over the past three years. So stick around. So when I first purchased the bike, it had the original shocks on it. And when I picked it up, I remember riding it home and feeling like, yeah, it's a comfortable bike. You know, it's easy and manoeuvrable. It was sort of, you know, around town, it was quite easy. But if you wanted to push that bike, it just wasn't capable. The shocks were shocking. You would literally find yourself just pogoing along. It just didn't have that stability. Um, so it was essential for me for two reasons, because I was modifying the bike one, they had to be aesthetically pleasing, so I had to fit in with all the modification that I was doing to the bike, like blacking the bike out. But it also had to have, you know, some benefits in terms of the rideability. It wasn't worth putting some shocks on that weren't gonna, you know, that was gonna decrease the handling in any way. Not that it was probably gonna be difficult to do that because the, the original shocks I found were terrible. Anyway, so I settled on the tech shocks. Now, before I did so, I read a few reviews, saw a few YouTube channels, and people basically said, oh yeah, they're a great set of shocks. You know, they're a little stiff when you first get them, but they will bed in over time. Now I've had these shocks for three years. I've done about 14,000 miles on these shocks and they have not bedded in at all. They are still a rock solid. And now that is good and bad. Good in that the bike's never missed a beat. It's never skipped out on me or anything like that. You know, the wheel has always been planted to the road. You can really give it some round bends, which is great. You can ride it quite aggressively. But on the downside, day-to-day -day use, rideability, especially if you've got a pillion, anything like that, it's a bit of a bone shaker. You know, any bumps, anything in the potholes in the road or speed humps or, you know, anything that you sort of like come across, you're going to find that you are going to be taking the impact. The shocks don't feel like they give you a comfortable ride. Now it's got a progressive spring on it, which basically means the top half is wound tighter than the middle part. And that basically means that this little top part takes more of the bumps first, if you're on uneven terrain. And then if you need it, the middle part will take a bit more. Um, when I got these shocks, I sort of did the, the, the rider sag once I sat on the bike. And because I'm only about 10 stone, you know, they didn't need any adjusting straight out of the box, they were fine. Um, if you do tighten them up and you turn the upper compression ring down, you're basically going to get a stiffer ride. So imagine you're compressing that spring even more. So if you're heavier, it's going to be harder for that spring to move. Now, like I said, I'm on out of the box. I'm adjusted as they came out of the box. And um, that's at full, full open compression, if you like and I find them really stiff. So if I was any heavier and I had to actually reduce this ring down, I dread to think how hard they would be. So yeah, in terms of um, rider comfort, they're not great. In terms of uh, pushing the bike, I found, yeah, they were fine. So let's get on to styling. Now I must admit, one of the main reasons I initially bought these was because they had the piggyback on the back of the shock and they were all black. They had the progressive spring and they looked mean, meaty and chunky and it was just the look that I was going for on the bike. Um, of course when I read the reviews they said they were going to bed in over time that I was expecting a stiffer ride and like I mentioned they haven't bedded in but I really did and do still like the look and they've maintained that really good look. I would say I did um, when I first got them use muck off all over the bike to give it a good old deep clean and it took the shine off of the tops of this uh, shock. The way that I got the shine to come back, which is only temporary, is when I use um, PTFE spray over the whole bike on all of these sort of components to keep the bike looking nice. But once the PTFE wears off and I give the bike a wash, these go back to a dull sort of finish. So if you're gonna buy the tech shocks, do not use muck off on these shocks because it will discolor 
this sort of area around the top and on the springs, I think it might be powder coated. So yeah, all this area that's powder coated, do not use muck off on it because you'll find that it strips the colour out. So let's talk about quality. Well, at 130 quid, which about round about that price range are now, <clears throat> I think that that's really what you're sort of expecting in terms of what you get. Um, 130 odd sort of quidish type feeling product. I have read some reviews where people have said that they've compressed this spring down and that it actually then starts to bulge in one way more than the other so that it's not a you know a solid compression all the way down this inner piston it sort of tends to make this bow like I said I can't say that on my own because I haven't done that the springs are as they came out the box have read that I've also seen where somebody on a Fruxton um, or a street cup, they had a set of these and as he was pulling the spring, the actual um, shaft and the shock were moving inside, clunking side to side. And I think if you look on YouTube, you can find that video as well. So like I said, quality, I don't want to call them bottom of the range completely because I think they still are quite a good shock. The thing with these are, I know that Tech are a UK company but these actual body of this shock, they buy in from overseas, from Asia. And then from what I understand, they actually strip these out and make them then a tech part so that the inner workings are tech. I have also seen on another video, someone has cut one of these completely in half to show the inner workings of this. Like I said, this does, the piggyback does contain a bladder, which you can use um, compressed air or nitrogen gas to fill that bladder up which aids with the uh, return of the oil that, f when, when this is compressed ba basically, the oil goes up here, flows down here and into this reservoir to aid with the damping. Um, and obviously what that, that air compression of that does is return that oil back for sort of a smoother ride. Like I said, in terms of the ride itself, it feels very stiff. It hasn't bedded in at all. Um, but also, like I said, it hasn't missed a beat in terms of when I have pushed it and ridden it hard, it's not skipped out or pogoed me around or anything like that. So, yeah, quality, I would say for the price, you do get a good sort of piece. So how have they fared over time? Well, like I said, I've had these on the bike for about three years now. They've done about 14,000 miles. I've ridden them in a variety of conditions, terrains, whatever. I have looked after them. You know, this bike's always cleaned and kept in tip-top condition. And uh, the shocks are never left to get dirty or filthy in any way. So I've really looked after them. They have just sprung a leak. Both of them, the uh, left, uh, sorry, the right side has got a bit of a worse leak than this side on the left. But never, ne needless to say, they've both got a small leak that started to appear. So that isn't, need for me really to, to get a new pair of shocks. Now, when I, that is the reason as well why I contacted Tech and said, have you got a pair of these in black? And they said, no. Um, and so my options were to either get the silver and black pair and replace them straight out, swap like for like, which I didn't really want to do because obviously my bike is a blackout edition that I've, you know, put some time, love and care into making and black and silver is not really going to go. The other option that I was looking at was those RFY shocks, which I think if you're looking in this sort of price range around the low end of getting a shock, uh, you're probably looking at those RFYs. Now, I haven't personally looked at them any closer than looking online, but from what I can tell, they are low end, and I don't really want to swap out my techs to go down a notch. So what I've done is I've gone up a couple of notches, and I've got some Fox shocks, which are fully adjustable, and they have got their own sort of little damping um, twizzle on the back where you can make it, you know, higher and lower sort of rebound speeds and stuff um, with an adjuster on the back of the piggyback. And I'll give a full review of those once I get those put on the bike. But yeah, so needless to say, Tech do not do these in black anymore. After 14,000 miles and keeping my bike in tip top condition, I've noticed that they have got a leak. I have also contacted Tech to see if they do do a rebuild kit, because if they do, I will rebuild these and then save them as a spare or maybe um, give them to somebody that I know as well with a Triumph that they might be able to stick a pair on if they're after of the All Blacks. Anyway, 
I hope this video has been of some help to you. It is a completely honest review. It is my, obviously, personal opinion. And I hope if you're looking to get a set of these Tech Shocks, if it's given you a little bit of an insight on what it's like to ride them, to own them, if you haven't yet checked out the Let Us Live website, go to www.letuslive.co.uk. It's a website that is inspired and dedicated to motorcycles and adventure. So if you're into anything two-wheeled, get yourself over there and grab yourself some nice t-shirts and jumpers and all sorts. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, you can do so by clicking the little button below. And if you click the bell icon, it will tell you when I put the next video out. In the meantime, all that's left for me to say is safe riding, safe driving, happy adventures, and I'll see you in the next one.